The NBA playoffs should elicit fond memories of classic games with clutch heroics. Bird Steel, Reggie Miller's eight points in nine seconds, Ray Allen's Miracle Three. The best teams and the best players squaring off ought to be the pinnacle of basketball. But in 2009, we got a playoff game that was so ghastly, James Naismith would have regretted coming up with the sport in the first place. This is the worst NBA playoff game. April 27th, the year of our Lord, 2009, New Orleans Arena in, you guessed it, New Orleans, Louisiana. Game four of the first round playoff series between the Denver Nuggets and New Orleans Hornets. The Nugs comfortably held serve in Colorado each of the first two games, but with the series shifting for game three, the Hornets got a boost from their home fans, including Dwayne Carter, and they escaped with a win by the skin of their teeth. These two teams have been absolutely clobbering each other throughout this series, and it didn't take long for this one to also devolve into a slugfest. Just one minute into this catastrophe, Kenyon Martin introduces his ass to Tyson Chandler's face, and shortly thereafter, professional agitator Dante Jones wallops an unsuspecting Chris Paul right in the back. Reigning Coach of the Year Byron Scott's defensive strategy for star forward Carmelo Anthony was to toss noted defensive stopper Peja Stoyakovic on him and not give him any help. And would you look at the brutal struggle Melo has to endure to get his buckets. Before anyone's broken a sweat, the Nugs have built a 15 point lead and Scott is already out of answers. You know it's bad when his superstar point guard gets isoed up on Nene, who is twice his size and he still can't shake loose. At this point, even Hugo the Hornet knows that everyone is doomed. CP3 gets yet another love tap from Martin before the first quarter comes to a close, at which point the Nuggets are hitting over two thirds of their shots, the Hornies haven't even hit one third of theirs, and we have already got a blowout. This game is so bad, even the clock decides to just throw in the towel, going about 17 seconds just stuck on 9.56 until the next dead ball, completely unnoticed by everyone and letting us soak in a few precious extraneous seconds because 2880 are not enough. I am the only person in the world that has ever discovered this glaring clock failure and you now know my most sacred secret. Any hopes of making this competitive are dashed the moment Chris Anderson drains this fadeaway baseline J. If a goddamn Birdman is doing whatever the hell he pleases to you, you deserve nothing. Even Tyson Chandler's attempt to fight back with a blatant shove of Nene simply results in an and one. But basketball doesn't get any shittier than what comes next. James Posey flubs this layup, and then let's quickly scroll through their next 10 possessions. Foul and free throws. Foul and free throws. Foul and free throws. Turnover. Turnover. Foul and free throws. Turnover. Foul and free throws. Foul and free throws. Foul and free throws. If that doesn't get the blood coursing through your veins, I do not know what will. Finally, with 146 left in the half, this Rasul Butler wide open air ball is their first actual field goal attempt since Posey barfed up that layup nearly five and a half game minutes earlier. We soon reach halftime, so let's check in with Chris Weber and Gary Payton. Hey guys, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with the T-Mobile halftime show and some scintillating conversation with my man Ahmad and GP. <laughs> At least we know nothing can dampen the spirit of those two or anyone else puffing the magic dragon. On to half number two. The Hornets actually put together a productive possession, moving the ball and ultimately finding a wide open Pages Stoyakovic in the corner. Now folks, Pages Stoyakovic, at the time he'll release this shot, is one of the three or four greatest long range snipers ever. And he is wide ass open. Corner for Peja. Wait wow! a second. A three point shooter shoots it over the rim. Right about now, Byron Scott is desperate because they're at a point where they're looking for Sean Marks to manufacture some offense. And that is never a good thing for anyone. It's gotten so bad, the third quarter ends with James Posey executing the most shameless disregard for getting a shot up before the buzzer that you will ever see. 
Going into the fourth, Byron Scott trots out his concession lineup of Antonio Daniels and four guys whose asses have been glued to the bench the entire evening and just lets them flop around for all 12 minutes. Early in that final frame, much to Steve Smith's delight, this Linus Claza three puts the nugs up. 40. And Denver coach George Carl's going on like two hours just sitting there with that little smile on his face, especially when Mo Peterson chucks up yet another Hornets air ball or this pass from Daniels in which he either expects Devin Brown to immediately have a three foot growth spurt or just wants to give a souvenir to a fan in the third row. A couple possessions later, Ronaldo Balkman tees up Johan Petro for this layup. Yes, we've now entered the Ronaldo Balkman Johan Petro portion of the proceedings. And it pushes their lead to 50. At this point, even Coach Scott simply can't hide his amusement with what he's seeing. When this Jason Hart jumper splashes through, the Nuggets are doubling up the Hornets with under three minutes to play. And if there is any doubt that this is the worst playoff game in NBA history, announcer Rick Kamla has a message for you. We can tell our grandkids that we called the worst playoff game in the history of the NBA. When the fat lady finally sings, the score stood at 121 to 63. Not only is that 58 point spanking tied for the largest of any playoff game ever, but in the 35 years preceding this game, no team had lost a home playoff game by even 40. From the very inception of the NBA through that 09 postseason, there were 12,772 quarters of playoff hoops. Only 77 others featured one team outscoring another by at least 20. That's about one in 166. This game had two such quarters, and it wasn't all that far from having a third. The 63 points the Hornets scored were a franchise low for any game, and was a number reached by Denver less than a minute into the third quarter. The Hornets' 17 buckets were also the fewest by any team in any regular or postseason game in 55 years. This game would have been a contender for the worst NBA game period. That it occurred in the postseason had the clock conspiring against us to extend the game even longer than 48 torturous minutes, the countless air balls, the half quarter of a team not getting a shot up, and plenty more make this the hands down, unequivocal, worst playoff game the NBA has ever delivered. Naismith didn't die for this. Hey folks, thanks so much for reliving this disastrous excuse for a basketball game with me. If you liked it, there is plenty more where that came from. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you didn't, don't forget to yell at me in the comments.